Hey guys, good morning. Let me get you up on the iPad so I can see the questions. Let's see. There we go. Yay! Hey everybody, good morning. So as pro oh I'm upside down. Why is why am I upside down? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Hello from Italy. Good morning. I don't know why I'm upside down. <laughs> now you can see it. Okay, that is gonna be weird. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference if I move the phone. Let's try. You know, like the rest of you, I'm sure I updated um, my software over the weekend. Hope it doesn't make you nauseous. Nope, I'm still upside down. That didn't help, did it? <laughs> Sorry! I don't know why that is. I guess we're going to have to work with it just being upside down. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. How are you? So we're upside down this morning. I don't know why. I'm going to turn the finished canvas this way. <laughs> I don't know why we're... It must have something to do with the iOS 9 update. That's all I can think of. I wanted to get on this morning, which is the first time I had a chance, and answer some of the questions about painting this face. Maybe do another one a little slower, which is going to be challenging because I'm going to have to turn it my canvas this way. So you guys are going to be upside down. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll be able to flip it, the video, when it goes to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Do you sell your artwork on eBay or through... I sell my artwork on Etsy, and I have a website I can sell it through too, although I haven't updated that yet. All right. So, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'm still drinking my morning coffee, see? First thing we're going to do before we get started, which I forgot Saturday, is we're going to put on some Art Guard to bury your cream. Some of the artist paints I use have um, nasty chemicals in them. So we, hey Mary, how are you? So we're going to try to do our best to prevent any of that getting absorbed through our skin by putting on some barrier cream. You can use Art Guard. There's another one called Invisible Glove. You could wear gloves. I prefer to not wear gloves, so... This also makes the, it easier to get the paint off your skin. Yeah. All right. Um, oil painting reproductions. So, first of all, if you're going to do reproductions of somebody else's art, you have to be careful of copyright issues. And um, selling artwork is a really tricky business. I would look into it to somebody who know with somebody who knows more about that than I do. <clears throat> I really do art because I love art. If I can sell a little bit, then I do. And I only sell original pieces of art, not reproductions. <clears throat> or reprints of my own art. If that's what you mean, then yes, you can, you know, selling reprints of your own art can be pretty profitable. Well, you still might, somebody may still own the copyright on that, so you still have to be careful. All right, so anybody who saw me on Saturday uh, with Pasta Brush, you saw me paint this face. Again, sorry that it's upside down. Uh, in 10 minutes, I worked on a background like this one. This is just a small canvas. Um, I'm not even sure how big it is. Let's see. Do I have a ruler? I have a ruler. Oh, the canvas is... Oh helps if I'm using the right hand. About five and a half by seven. And I already had the day before just collaged a few bits of scraps of paper on it and put some painty marks um, and then let that dry and um, as you know sort of a mixed media background and that was what we got started on for the face. One of the main questions when I saw the replay was what kind of paint I used. So here you can see my pile of paint. I have lots of different brands of paint. I really don't stick to any one brand of paint. 
Um, I have everything from a student grade um, generic brand of artist acrylic. This is by Art Dist District, which is an Aaron Brothers art and framing brand. Aaron Brothers is a subsidiary of Michael's. Um, <clears throat> Liquitex Basics. I also have Liquitex Heavy Body. This is just titanium white. This is brilliant yellow green. This is quadrochrome blue violet. I do sell prints of my artwork. Uh, again, you have to look on my Etsy shop. Um, this is Amsterdam Acrylic Turquoise Green. This is Atelier brand, um, which is, ay, 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 is it an Australian brand? Yeah, it's an Australian brand. I had I got this from Utrecht, and I have Payne's Gray and Allure. Aliamide? I can never pronounce that. I don't know. Aliamide? Yellow light. I don't know. A-R-Y-L-A-M-I-D-E. Yellow light. This is a schmink acrylic. Schmink, the same people who make watercolor paint. It's got kind of prints. There's a print. There is, and I have printed some glissé prints before. Um, I also print reprint on a number of different kinds of paper, including uh, metallic paper, which gives some of my artwork a really interesting finish when it's being reprinted. Um, I use a local photography um, reprint studio called Bay Photo, um, and um, they do reprints for me on demand of my artwork, and then I sell those on Etsy. I also have um, uh, some artwork that is, you know, a uh, JPEG upload. Um, and uh, I really don't keep a lot of it in stock. I do it on demand, whatever the customer wants. Okay, so this is a schmink and this is Carmine. And this is a sample tube. They sent me a sample. And I gotta say, I've never tried the schmink acrylics before. Um, yeah, I really love them. This little bit of red is so highly pigmented. And this is a Joe so Sonia print paint. Uh, Chroma's Joe Sonia. This is made in the USA. This again I got, I think, at Utrecht.com. This is Amethyst. And these are the these are the colors I used on Saturday. Um, I also said on Saturday that I tend to use <clears throat> faces from magazine images, uh, from magazine layouts for suggestion and inspiration for position and proportion and features. Although I am by no stretch a realistic painter. This is just so that I can sort of get something that resembles a face. Um, I am um, an expressive abstract painter. So I don't generally do anything that's too realistic. And that's off camera that way um, where I can see it. Now we're going to set up our palette first. <clears throat> the way I usually set my palette up, good morning everybody, um, is I usually put my white in the center. You know, I'm not sure. I would definitely um, check into it though because you don't want to get started selling um, reproductions of their paintings and then get in trouble. So, I'm no, by no stretch a copyright expert, but I would def definitely, if I was um, in your position, I would check it, Liren. Okay, so I usually put my sort of light colors together. I do not put things in like color wheel order. This is like Gina, Gina's color wheel order. <laughs> All right. This is Payne's Gray, which is, I use a lot of Payne's Gray instead of black. Payne's Gray is more interesting. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And if uh, Galeb is a troll, he should know right now, or she should know right now, that I will, if you keep that up, I'll block you. So, just FYI. We're not here to talk about big butts this morning. We're here to talk about art. <clears throat> I think it was Lisa. It pops up again I'll block it in, unless one of you guys have done it already yeah all right so now we have our palette set up 
microscope make a sound when someone comes on I don't know oh, thank you Miko I appreciate that so much it's good to have peeps out there that can do that stuff for me I'm gonna throw this paint tubes on the floor hang on so they're out of my way all right okie dokie Okay, so curious about my setup before we get started. That's a good question. So I have my iPad, which you can see in the corner of the screen, and I am logged in as you guys are, um, and I'm watching the broadcast with the um, with the um, comments. And um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Okay. Um, I have my phone hanging in a cradle above my work table, pointing down at the work table so that um, that's what I'm filming with, my iPhone. I do have pictures of that, and I can uh, post them to my um, social media later. Um, if you're in my Facebook group, um, <clears throat> If you're in my face, we will in a minute. If you're in my Facebook group, um, I you can look in there, and I will put post pictures there. But I have a cradle hanging off the shelf above my work table, and my phone is um, hanging in the cradle, pointing down at the table, and I film with that. But I'm able to see with the iPad. All right. So looking at my inspiration photo, I'm going to start with Payne's gray. And I'm going to start outlining my face. And I'm going to actually put this one away. And even though I use the same inspiration photo, I can guarantee you no two of these ever come out the same. So I'm going to set that aside and we'll compare it later. But I can pretty much guarantee you it's not going to come out the same. This is a small filbert before somebody asks. You're welcome. Um, and I don't know what size filbert this is, but it's just a little tiny filbert brush. So I'm going to start with the forehead. And you know what? I'm going to put this down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm just looking at the lines here of the forehead. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like a little number four. It's a small one. Yeah. So then I'm going to put the bridge of the nose here. And I may not get the lines exactly in the right place the first time. That's okay. And I'm taking a little more time with this, so it's possible that this one even turns out better than the first one did. Because <laughs> we're going to take a little more time with it. Putting in the lips. And I'm right now I'm just kind of mapping things out. I'm going to close the mouth. The inspiration photo has an open mouth. Because this is an inspiration photo. We're not looking to copy it exactly. All right. We're going to put in, I've got an eye here, eyebrow. I know you're thinking, oh my God, what did she do? I just gave it some interest there, blurred my lines a little bit. We're suggesting the shapes rather than actually worrying. This is not about drawing an exact shape. You're doing an expressive portrait. So this is about suggesting shapes. The viewer's eye will put in details in that you don't even paint necessarily. I like this, this is a clay tool. It's one of my favorite tools. Thank you, Mary. I saw that comment. Appreciate that. So I'm going to bring in some of the Payne's gray here. I 
think that was even less time than Saturday getting my fingers involved in the painting process. <laughs> I like painting with my fingers. I do have my baby wipes handy. All right, and my rag. So now I'm gonna go in with, um, um, I'm gonna just go with this violet color, which again is a cool color. Um, this is a, one of the darker purples, so it's gonna help me um, with my shadows. The warmer colors help with the light source. I'm looking at all the places in the inspiration photo where there's shadow, where things are darker. And I am taking a little, you know, more time than I was on Saturday. So if you guys want to ask me questions as I'm painting, it's one of the reasons we're doing this. So you can definitely do that. You may start to lose some of your features. You bring them, you'll bring them back. Thanks for all the hearts, guys. Okay, so now that's pretty dark. I'm gonna clean my brush off a little bit and I'm gonna pull in some of the lighter colors now. And I'm gonna start with the lighter violet. violet. Watercolor question. Okay, shoot, Mary. You're welcome. So now this is a warmer violet. These are both purple colors, but this one is much warmer than the other one. So this one I'm gonna to use to help me with my light parts, indicating sunlight and warmth, the brightness in the photo. And you'll still see some of the background through the face and it just provides some interest. All right, I'm gonna switch to the turquoise blue color. One of my favorite colors to paint with. Again, uh, this is um, a warmer color than the other ones that we're using. And at some point you want to probably lose the... No, the Koi and the Kurataki, because they're more of a student grade paint, are more opaque than the Daniel Smith and Windsor Newton. You're not imagining things. You're welcome. All right, so now I'm just lightening up the spots, <clears throat> some spots. We don't wanna get her too dark here. I'm going to, now before we do too much else, I need, the colors are beautiful though, Mary. I'm gonna add the white to her eyes. The white part of the eyeball is known as the sclera. For those of you who do not know, I, for years, when I mean years, I mean years, was a licensed dispensing optician. And I used to know a lot more names of the parts of the eye, but I've forgotten a lot. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay. 
when do you know when to stop? Okay, so, you know, I get asked that question a lot. I have a hard time stopping. Usually I stop when it goes to its forever home. <laughs> okay, uh, seriously. I don't paint live people in the nude. You'll have to go somewhere else for that. Okay, I'm going to go into my lime green, which is a much warmer color than we've used so far. And don't be afraid to, you know, mess up and put the wrong color in the wrong place because this is all about playing and experimenting and especially if you're doing a timed exercise. Um, one of the points of doing a timed exercise is to, you know, get loose and, you know, stop worrying about um, what color you're putting where and, you know, be f more free and expressive about your mark making. Thank you, Mary. So we're gonna just keep adding our warmer colors to our photo on top of the darker ones until we get something that we really like. Blending them a little bit, adding, adding more color when we need to. I do want to grab my Stabilo pencil because I want to be using that at some point. I'm going to go in now with the lemon yellow. Let's see. This eye is bother bothering me. It's not quite right, but we'll work on it. There's always some part of the face that when you're doing this, and especially when you're painting in these non-traditional, non-lifelike colors, that's going to give you like fits. There's going to be some part of the face that you're going to have to like keep going back to and working on because you're just, it's just not quite right. There's always one part. Um, at some point too, you want to leave the inspiration photo set aside because you need to work on the painting on its own. <clears throat> and it takes on its own life separate from the inspiration photo and that's okay that eye is giving me fits though let's see if we can fix it um, I'm gonna try this round brush better actually all right let's go back to the filbert let that dry a little bit I want to um, lighten up underneath her nose because right now it looks like she's got boogers hanging out her nose And don't forget, you know, you've got your baby wipe and if you get some paint in the totally the wrong place, you know, my background, my mixed media background is completely dry. I could rub it with a baby wipe and all that paint's going to come right off. That's my dog. There's probably somebody out in the front yard. So I had the idea this weekend, if you guys want to, we're going to do some sort of a weekly art lesson. And I may even, and I can't guarantee I'll do them every week, but I was thinking maybe even we would do like Watercolor Wednesday Live. Like some art basics. That's pretty good. She's pretty good. I like that. You like that idea? Okay, good. 
Now, so now, you know what? I'm really liking the way her face looks a lot. Here's a, a view for you guys right side up. And at least for the moment, I'm not wanting to touch her. Yay, okay, so good. So we're gonna start this Wednesday um, with Watercolor Wednesday Live. Um, I'm not sure of the time yet, probably around the same time between 10.30 and 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And um, we're gonna just do basics. So you need a watercolor set. Um, it could be a student grade one like Koi or Kurataki or a Winsor Newton student grade set. It doesn't have to be fancy, whatever you have. Um, and some watercolor paper and some brushes and you'll need at least two water containers one for dirty water one for clean water okay and we're gonna just work on some watercolor basics to start with okay so now I really like her so now let's do something around for with a space around her Tap the area above the little person on your the right lower right hand side of your screen and a bunch of hearts will pop up. So now I'm going to just hint at some, you know, hair around her face. And I'm going to use the purple at least to start with. The two purples, I should say, not just the one purple. Now when you're painting a canvas where, where it's big or small, don't forget your sides. If you paint the sides out too while you're doing it, then you don't have to worry so much about framing it. Okay, now that I'm going back at it, let's see. I like it, but it's not right. It's not right exactly right there yet. Let's work on that a little bit. See, last time I added some red to her face, but this time I'm not wanting to do that, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to wipe my brush off. It's too wet. All right. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good to tell them. Thank you. How do I decide on colors? Um, so I have a set of colors that I prefer. Um, hang on. <laughs> I'm having trouble painting and talking because the eye is just giving me fits. It, I should have not touched it. See, this happens. So I have a, a standard kind of set of colors that I prefer. Oh, that's actually nice. Um, and I use usually use those. Um, I Payne's gray is usually my go-to color for shadows, for the cool, the cool colors, for the shadows. And um, this is usually my standard palette when I'm doing faces. So a Payne's Gray or something dark besides black, turquoise, one or two purples, yellow, lime, um, sometimes a red. This is not a color I always have on here. And then white. Um, and I don't use white the way you would standardly normally think of using white. I do use it to put a little bit in the white part of the eye because you kind of need that to give your piece, you know, some life. If you add just, you know, a little, it doesn't have to be a lot. In fact, if you put too much, um, you'll tell you'll be able to tell that they're you know you'll know right away that's why you should have your have your thumb or baby wipe ready um you know when you're starting to put your final highlights on if you're using white have have something ready to wipe it back and smudge it a bit because if you put too much you'll know right away um i wouldn't use any more colors than this than i have on this palette right now because that is going to be too hard for you and that's going to be too many colors you want a couple of darks 
cool colors, a couple of warm colors, and then some white. And that's all you need. Um, now you can have shades of the same color, like this one is much cooler than this one. This is warmer. And you can do this kind of thing in shades of all of the same color, but that's tougher. It's easier if you do it this way. Uh, my usual, I usually also have um, um, some sort of, not always, but a lot of times I have some sort of neon. Um, those are really great warm colors, like neon orange or neon yellow, um, something like that. And right now I'm just touching up some of the shadows. And I'm actually going to do some of it with a Stabilo pencil. We are mixed media artists after all, so you can firm up some of your lines with your Stabilo. See, I really like that. She's turning out great. I love her. Okay, so now I don't want to mess with her face anymore because I'm really liking the way she's looking. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the edges. So I'm going to actually use my baby wipe. And I'm going to grab some of my Payne's Gray. And I'm going to smudge it around the edge a little bit. And you can use, you know, your finger, a paintbrush, a makeup sponge. I think on Saturday I used the makeup sponge. I've got to move that because it's totally in my way. <laughs> you guys can't see, but I just threw it on the floor. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to touch up my edges before I do too much with the hair around her face. That way if I get some of this paint on there on the front side, it's not as big a deal. I haven't messed up anything too important. This video lesson will be up on YouTube within a couple of days. It takes me a couple of days because it's not easy to get um, the video footage off of my phone and um, into the video editor. And I have to put it in the video editor to do some stuff with the um, screen size. All right. Do some a little bit of blending just with my baby wipe so things sort of seamlessly blend one into the other I like that I'm going to take some of our purples again and touch up just some of those lines that we lost and see I, I ended up not using that red I like her without the red. I like red. She doesn't really need it. So there you go. That's how I did the painting from Saturday. Now I took obviously more minutes to do this one than I did the one on Saturday, but I did use the same inspiration photo and there's how different they both look. Let me move them a little bit. Let's see. There we go. Yes. Okay. Um, do a few of them and, um, you know, time yourself and you'll notice that the first one is okay. But then when you get, if you, depending on how many of them you do, when you get to that last one, um, that last one's going to be much different than that first one. I am noticing that I want to take a little bit of the Payne's Gray and the turquoise together on the same brush. Just a little bit. Yep. So also don't be afraid to, you know, turn your paintings upside down, even if it's a face. That should be less bright right there and more in shadow. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions? And all this extra paint gets wiped off onto a journal page or something. Never fear. It doesn't ever go to waste. 
fact, I've got to paint on some of my fabric that's on my um, table here today. So I think Wednesday we'll be back with a watercolor lesson um, Wednesday morning between 10.30 and 11. I'll try to announce it on Facebook before I get on. And um, I hope this gave you guys some idea of a quick sort of little painting exercise that you can do. Um, give it a try and see what you think. You need two or three cool colors um, from the color wheel. Um, so look at your color wheel and look at the paints that you have. Here's a, one of my color wheels. And so for the most part, like, you know, these are gonna be your cooler colors that will help you indicate shadow and, um, um, and coldness and darkness. And then <clears throat> these colors will help indicate sunlight and warmth fluorescent orange and fluorescent yeah, uh, pink is a great one, a great two great colors to use, but I would suggest um, two or three cool colors and two or three warm colors, and then just really start laying, layering your marks on top of each other until you get something that you're really happy with. And uh, that's it for today, I think, unless any, somebody has any more questions. Thank you for the hearts very much. And I will talk to you all later. Don't forget to go out, have some fun, play with your paints, and um, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I'll see you all Wednesday. Bye.